in the previous video in the description below that like button we went over practice it self check 2.37 which is this work right here on the right hand side but now we're going to be doing 2.38 and it's a very similar concept just a little bit different that's why this is right here so 2.38 we want to suppose we have this program it's been written produces the output shown below so this one right here and also shown in the previous self check which we mentioned a pattern of output consisting of lines with these repeated symbols. Now the author wants to write the program to be scalable. So using a class constant called size. The previous output used a size of six, so there are six lines. Now the following is an output of size four, so we are changing it to be of four lines. This is for like a for loop. We want to fill in the following equations for the number of each character relative to the line number for each type of character. There is a separate equation for size 6 and size 4. So just because we solve size 6 doesn't mean we've solved size 4 yet, which is what it wants. Then once we've figured out both of the equations, we want to find a general equation that uses a size constant that would work for a figure of any size. So we're going to fill in the following equations for the number of occurrences of the exclamation mark character on each line. They're going to suggest we write a table. I suggested this last time. Um, we want to make one table for size 6 and another for size 4. Some values are going to be the same size um, because both sizes doesn't necessarily depend on the size, but that doesn't mean that we can just assume that size 6 is size 4. So once we have both of the equations, we can look at our sizes, look at the general pattern, and that uses the size constant. So we want to compute A, B, C, D, and E in the equations below, and we want to assume that we go from 1 to 6 when we're looking at this. So first we have our size 6 from a previous self-check problem. It's the exact same thing actually. If I duplicate it and we go over to 2.37, we have slash is equal to a times line plus b. Uh, the um, exclamation mark is equal to a times line plus b. So just moving that around a little bit. Now for size 4, our number of exclamation marks is equal to a times line plus c this time. And then we have a general equation for any size right here. So now we want to focus on solving for it. So we have both of these right here. Um, and how would we do this? Well, let's look at size number four. The number of exclamation marks is equal to a times line plus c. And so if we go to our number four, we're looking at our exclamation marks right here. Let's start at the very bottom. So at the very bottom, we have two exclamation marks. Two is equal to, we have our a times our line number, we're on line four plus C. So that's going to be our 4A and C. Now, we have to look at the next line because we have two unknowns. So the next line, there's going to be six exclamation marks and it's equal to A times three plus C. So combining this together, we are going to get A2 is equal to 4A minus six, and then actually this should be A plus six because this is going into here. So you have plus six minus three A. And so if we do this, we can move the six over. We're gonna get a negative four is equal to just an A. So our A is gonna be equal to negative four for the number four right here. So this is again, our general equation. They already gave it to us, so we don't need to find it. That's gonna be important once we figure out our C. And then we're gonna to have to do the same thing for our size six. That way we can get rid of some of these variables and look at everything really. So let's look at our C now. Well, we just have to plug this back in. So negative four is equal to A is gonna go into here. Add four to both sides, six is equal to A times four. We have two is equal to negative four times four is going to be a 16 plus C. This should be a negative 16 because we have a negative here and that's going to give us a negative, actually this should be 18 is equal to C. So 18 is equal to C after we add 16 to both sides. And so now we found our two equations right here. Now, because they gave us the general equation, I actually don't think that we do need to solve for this right here. We don't need to solve for our size six. So let's just complete this only solving for our size four. See if we can do it. So we have the number of exclamation marks is equal to A times line plus D times size plus E. Now, do you notice anything familiar here? This exclamation mark equal to A times line looks very similar to what we have right here. 
And so if we subtract this a times line from both sides, we get our exclamation mark minus a times line. We can do the same thing for here, and we can see that's going to set it equal to c. So c is equal to our exclamation mark minus a times line. And what is c? Well, c is 18. So what we can do here is say that we have 18 equal to d times the size plus e. Well, now we actually have two unknowns. So we do need the size six equation. So let's box this off for now, and we're gonna come back here in a second. So looking at this, let's solve for our size six now. It's going to be very similar. We can't reuse what we used last time, I believe, because this is slightly different. So let's just check back up here. We know exactly what we have to do. Let's look at our last row. There's six in here. So the number of exclamation marks in here is going to be two and then it's just equal to our a times the line, line is six, so we have a times six, so six a plus b. Now let's look at the next line, we have six in here, so six is equal to, we have a row five a plus b, and so let's solve for our b inside of here. We are gonna get two is equal to six a, and then if we're again solving for b, we have plus six minus five a, so that means that we are going to subtract six from both sides, we get negative four is equal to a, so negative four is equal to a in here. Now let's plug it into our b, our four rb. So if we plug in negative four into this right here, we get two is equal to negative 24. Add that to both sides. We're gonna get our 26 is equal to our b. So that's how we would solve for that. Now let's see if we could plug it inside of this equation. So plugging it inside of this equation, we're able to. We're gonna do the same technique where we move our a times line over to the other side. Same thing for up here. So we're gonna get b is equal to that. So 26 is going to be equal to d times the size plus e. And since this is a general equation, we can actually kind of set these equal to each other or kind of join them. So let's use this and plug in for our e. So we're going to have 18 is equal to d times our size. And we should just substitute our size. This is for number 4 and this is for 6. We have 4d basically. And then plugging in for our e, we have plus 26 minus the d times 6. So we are going to get a negative 2d is equal to, moving the 26 over, we're going to get a negative 8. So we have 4 is equal to d. Plugging this in, we're going to get 18 is equal to d. Well, d is 4. So we're going to have 4 times 4 because of the size plus e. So we're going to have 18 minus 16, and that's going to give us an e equaling to 2. So we can plug everything into here. We're going to get negative 4 for our a. We are going to get b as our 26. c is our 18. d is going to be 4. And then e is going to be 2. So that is how we would solve this. We press submit. We pass 5 out of 5 tests. And that is it for this problem.